Hi everyone, welcome to our video lesson on 6-1. We're studying proportions in this video lesson, our first lesson in chapter 6, proportions. Let's first, before we talk about what a proportion is, let's define what a ratio is. A ratio is simply a comparison of two quantities. We can write a ratio in a few different ways. As you can see, we write it as A to B. Another way that we write it is with the colon in between A and B, so two quantities. Most oftentimes, though, I think what I do the most is I write it as a fraction. A to B with a numerator and a denominator. But they all mean the same thing. They all read the same way. You read all three of those as A to B. So we're going to write a ratio here of the athlete to student ratio in this school. There are 520 students that are in sports, and there are 1850 in the school. Find the athlete to student ratio. So the way this is worded is very important. It says athlete first, and then the student comes second. So if I were to write this as a fraction, you know, this A to B kind of a thing, if I write as a fraction, the athletes come first, and it's 520, and then 1850 is the total number of students. So there's the ratio, 520 to 1850. We could reduce this, but our directions here say round to the nearest tenth, or find the ratio to the nearest tenth. So we could just take 520 divided by 1850 in our calculator, and we get the, frac or we get the decimal 0.3. So it's a, a 0.3 to 1 ratio kind of a thing. On this next one, it says the number of students in sports is 520, the number of students in school is 1850, so same as the last one, the same numbers anyway, but this time it says find the athlete to non-athlete ratio, this time as a simplified fraction. So athletes go in the numerator, there's 520 athletes, non-athletes go in the denominator. So how many non-athletes are there in the school? Well, if there's 1850 total, and there's 520 athletes, if we subtract, we would get the number of non-athletes. So there are 1,330 non-athletes. And this one wants our answer as a simplified fraction. So we simplify this fraction, and we get 52 over 133. For every 52 athletes, there is, our, there is 133 non-athletes. An extended ratio, again, is a comparison. This time, it's of three or more quantities. So example, it's A, 2, B, 2, C. Um, so when we have this kind of an example problem, in a triangle, the ratio of the measures of the three sides are 5 to 12 to 13. It's an extended ratio. The perimeter is 90. Find the measures of the three sides. So like, if it was a 2 to 1 ratio, then one side is twice as big as another. Maybe one side is 12 units long, well then the other one would be 24. So this time it's 5 to 12 to 13. So if I kind of say, well, if this is 5, and this is 12, and this is 13, well that ratio would still be consistent if it was 10, 24, and 26. That's still a 5 to 12 to 13 ratio. It would still be the same if, the, if this was like 15, and this was 36, and this was 39. That would still reduce to a 5 to 12 to 13 ratio. So what we're going to do here, class, is if it's, we're going to multiply each side by x, that way the ratio would still remain 5 to 12 to 13 no matter what length the sides are if we multiply all three of them by what we're going to get to later on in this chapter is called the scale factor. So now if I have three sides of a triangle, 5x plus 12x plus 13x, and add them up, it equals the perimeter, and the perimeter is 90 centimeters. So 5x plus 12x plus 13x equals the perimeter of 90. Now I could find what x equals, so I'm going to solve for x, and I believe I get 30x equals 90, divide both sides by 30, so x equals 3. 
So if x equals 3, it says find the measures of the three sides. One side is 5 times x. Another side is 12 times x and 13 times x. So my side lengths are 15 centimeters, 36 centimeters, and 39 centimeters. And you can see that if we were to reduce this, it would still reduce to a 5 to 12 to 13 ratio. So that's how you do that one with an extended ratio. We're now going to get into what's called a proportion, a very important topic. A proportion is an equation stating that two ratios are equal. So a ratio is, is kind of like a fraction of comparing two quantities. A proportion is two of those with an equal sign in the middle. Two of them that are equal. I want you to uh, just notice something about some terminology here. The extremes of a proportion are this A and D right here. And the means of a proportion are B and C. And one thing that's very significant about a proportion, that if you multiply the extremes and you multiply the means, it ends up being the same number. Notice how if two fractions are equal, I'm going to multiply these two, and I'm going to get 30. I'm going to multiply these two, and I'm going to get 30. So that's a, um, an important part of a proportion, is that their cross products equal each other. So take a look at this one here. This one isn't in your notes, so just kind of pay attention with me here. Do these form a proportion? Well, if the cross products equal each other, it does form a proportion. So if I cross multiply this, I get 18. If I cross multiply this, I get 18. So yes, this does form a proportion. 6 ninths does equal 2 thirds because their cross products equal each other. Does 12 24ths equal 3 fourths? Well, 12 times 2 is 48, and 3 times 24 is 72. Is this a proportion? The answer is no. This is not a proportion because the cross products do not equal each other. Now, I want you to know there's something else that I think is very interesting about proportions is that you can change around the means or change around the extremes, and it still makes a proportion. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to bring 6 down here and 3 up here. So this is going to blow your brains. You ready? Is 3 ninths the same fraction as 2 sixths? When I bring the 6 down and the 3 up, 3 ninths reduces to 1 third, and 2 sixths reduces to 1 third. Crazy, right? I can also switch around my means. So if I bring the 2 down here, if I bring the 2 down here, it's 6 halves. If I bring the 9 up here, it is 9 thirds. Does 6 halves equal the same fraction as 9 thirds? Crazy, right? Ridiculous. Let's do this one more time so that you can prove that I'm not lying to you. Is 4 thirds the same thing as 8 sixths? Well, if we do their cross products, are these two fractions equal to each other? We get 24 when 4 times 6, and 8 times 3 is 24. hey -o! These fractions do form a proportion. These ratios are equal. So if that's the case, can I switch around their means? 4, you're going down there. So it's 8 fourths. 6, you're hopping up here. So it's 6 thirds. Do these two fractions equal each other? Yes. They both equal the number 2. Let's do it the other way around one more time. Here we go. 3, you're hopping up. 8, you're going down. So 8, sorry, 4 eighths. Is that the same fraction as 3 sixths? Yes, they both equal 1 half. We're going to get to this concept a little bit later on in this chapter, so that's why I wanted to cover it right now. But for now, all we're doing is solving proportions. So the way that we solve proportions, with being that two fractions are equal to each other, their cross products are equal to each other. So I can simply cross multiply them and solve. 
Once you cross multiply, now there's no more denominator. It's 6 times y. That equals 18.2 times 9. Now there's no more denominator, and now you could solve this equation just like you did when you were in 4th or 5th grade. 6 times y is 6y. 18.2 times 9 is 163.8. And then we divide both sides by 6, and we get y all by itself. And y does equal 27.3. Next one. Be careful when you have a binomial as part of the ratio. I always put the binomial in parentheses right away. That way I'd be sure to remember to distribute. Now this negative 26 sixths, you could put the negative to the negative 26 or you could bring it down to the negative 6. Just make sure you don't put a negative in both spots, because then a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and then it changes the value of the number. So I always just keep the negative sign in the numerator. So I'm going to take a positive 6 multiplied by 4x minus 5, and that's going to equal a negative 26 multiplied by 3. So now when I solve, I'm going to distribute. That's why I put the parentheses there, so I can remember to multiply 6 times both terms in the binomial. So 24x minus 30, that equals a negative 26 times 3 is a negative 78. And now I'm going to add 30. So 24x equals a negative 48. And finally, dividing both sides by 24, x equals a negative 2. So hopefully solving proportions makes sense too, because now we're going to use proportions to solve a few more problems. A boxcar on a train has a length of 40 feet and a width of 9 feet. A scale model is made with a length of 16 inches. Find the width of the scale model. The first thing we're going to want to do here, class, is when we set up a proportion, we want the same units. So if we want the same units, let's maybe get everything into inches, and then we're going to set up a proportion. So if we take 40 feet times 12 inches, we would get how many inches are in 40 feet? And that would be 480 inches. So this is the length. The length is 480 inches. And then 9 times 12. 9 times 12 is 108. So the width is 108 inches. So now if I wanted to find the width of the scale model, I can do set up a ratio of length over width. So if my length is 480 over my width of 108, then I could say a scale model has a length of 16 inches. What is the width? What is w? So I set up two equal ratios, also called a proportion, where I could cross multiply now and solve for the width. So we cross multiply here and here. So 480 times w is 480w. 16 times 108. Let me do that on my 108 times 16, 1,728. I divide both sides by 480. And I get width to be 3.6 inches. All right, last problem for the day. Here we go. My wife and I, we enjoy going jogging together. Doesn't everybody enjoy jo going jogging? I'm actually lying. I just kind of do it to make my wife happy, I guess. Anyway, if we can run 3 miles in 25 minutes, not a terrible pace, I don't think. How long will it take for us to run a marathon if I want, ever wanted to run a marathon some, someday? 
Well, I could set up two equal fractions called a proportion. If I could run three miles in 25 minutes, that would be the same as how many minutes, or sorry, yeah, how many minutes would it take for us to run a marathon? And a marathon is 26.2 miles. So three miles to 25 minute, minutes, 26.2 miles into how many minutes? All right, let's solve this proportion. I'm curious, how long will it take me to run a marathon if I keep up this pace, which I probably wouldn't be able to? 3 times x is 3x. That equals 25 times 26.2. And 25 times 26.2 is 655. And then if I divide both sides by 3, I would get my x, or my amount of minutes, I'd have to run for 218.33 minutes. Oofta. If I divided that by 60, I'm just going to do that in my calculator quick. If I divide that by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, it would take me about 3.64 hours. Okay, no thank you. I don't think I want to run for 3.64 hours, over three and a half hours of running. And that's if I keep up my pace, which I'd probably inevitably slow down. I think I will stick to just running three miles instead of 26.2. Let me know if you have any questions on this lesson when you get to class tomorrow, everybody.